and you can you can switch it. Sorry. Am I starting off, Sean, and then I'm giving it to you? I... Oh, I'm starting off, and then I give it to you. <laughs> okay. Okay. Sorry, I don't know what's happening. Yeah. Neither do I. So join join the live team on that one. Uh, I'm just here to uh, I'm here to welcome everyone on, on behalf of the AC3 uh, you know, chairs. Uh, myself, Thomas, and Annette. I want to say thank you for being part of this initiative and understand that we, we have to continue moving forward regardless of, of what uh, administration changes happen or anything that happens. We are, we, are, we are committed to making this happen so that we can create a better Rochester and a better future for the arts community here in Rochester and the surrounding areas. So we're not, we're not, we don't, we're not involved in those waters. We're going we're gonna to go straight ahead in our canoe and our, our love boat of creativity and make something special for the city. And that's what I wanted to say. Thank you very much. <laughs> you, Thomas. Thank you, Sean. <laughs> yes, I, I agree with you. Uh, whatever waters we, we have to go through, we're gonna stay in our boat and go through it. Um, uh, let, I just wanted to um, kind of gather us, center us a little bit before we start the meeting meetings. I think this should really happen all the time that we should just uh, kind of get quiet for a moment, um, know that we're all connected and we're connected with everybody who is in here also. And uh, we wanna make sure that we move forward with a spirit of joy and enthusiasm uh, and, um, that, well, joy really. We wanna make sure this is joyful, that we, what we're doing is something that is going to um, permeate for years to come, and uh, for many people that are, that are not even born yet, you know, and so we want to make sure that what we're doing is really beautiful. And so uh, I know it will be. I just want to remind us to be centered in that place of uh, sort of joy and beauty. And it's a lot of work, but uh, it's joyful work. And uh, we want to make sure that we put our joy into it so that joy comes out of it, you know. So I just wanted to kind of take a moment um, and, and do that with us and center us. Uh, do I give it to you, Annette, and or do I go back to Kevin? I don't, sorry, I'm a little confused. Oh, you're on mute. Thank you, thank you. Welcome, welcome. Um, we're gonna really right, move right into the heart of the work and review the agenda and, and work positively forward for the, the greater Rochester um, arts community. So Kevin, could you uh, pull up uh, the agenda and then we can uh, proceed? Thank you. I sure can. Uh, thank you, Thomas and Annette and Sean. Um, and before we get into the agenda, oh, I got one more person in the waiting room. Let me admit three here. Uh, okay. Um, before we get into it, I just, you know, want to want to mention, you know, <laughs> with everything that's going on uh, in our city right now and how it relates to this, uh, as, as I'm sure you all are aware, based on the results last night, it appears that we will likely have a new mayor um, next year, starting in January. And so what does that mean for this group? Um, my initial uh, understanding is, is it won't affect us too much. Mayor Warren has been uh, incredibly supportive uh, in, uh, of this effort and, and really kind of pushed for it in her State of the Union and, and in support of the comprehensive plan that pushed for this kind of thing. So um, I'm grateful for her work that came before us and everybody's tons of work that came before us that leading to this moment. Um, I don't have any reason to think that uh, a future Mayor Evans would want to change things up with this. Um, I imagine that he would be fully supportive, but I can't speak for him. Um, and that's many months down the road anyways. But what I can say is on behalf of the city planning office, uh, who I represent, that we're committed to this until somebody above us tells us otherwise. And again, I don't have any reason to think that that will happen and, and that we'll just continue with our work. But I just put that out there in case anybody has any um, une uneasiness about that, that tra transition. I'm, I'm very hopeful that things will continue forward as is. Um, I'll also just mention too that um, for those of you who aren't aware, um, so again, I'm in the city planning office and Doreen Kirkmeyer is the manager of city planning and she's actually retiring this month. So uh, she's been amazing to work for, done really great work in leading the 2034 plan. Um, and so she'll be retiring and I'm really fortunate to be 
uh, taking a promotion and will be um, the new manager of the city planning office. Um, so that's sort of an evolving role for me here, but really won't affect uh, this too much moving forward as, as far as I can tell. So, but we're gonna hire somebody to sort of backfill a position. So maybe you'll see another face come along the way. Um, and also getting back to the mayoral transition, I can't speak for Justin either. Um, I have not yet to talk to him um, since last night. So I don't uh, know where he's at, but we'll, we'll be in touch soon. And, and uh, but I just, I can't speak for him moving forward either. He is in an appointed position as the director of communications. So he may or may not continue in that position. I don't know. Uh, but as manager of planning, it's a civil service position, not an appointed position. So not affected uh, by this transition. So thank you for um, listening to all that, but just wanted to get that out of the way. And now we can get into- uh, Kevin, can I just interject uh, please, sure. uh, real quick here? I, I did actually have a long conversation with Balik um, about this um, group. Cool, cool. And to let him know what we've been doing. Uh, actually, when we started, I uh, had a conversation with him. And uh, so I, I didn't um, twist his arm, but I, <laughs> he's a member of my family. So I kind of told him that he had to kind of go along with what we were doing. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't think there'll be too much, um, <laughs> too much pushback. <laughs> Great. So you you paved the way for us. I appreciate that, Tom. <laughs> okay. Just a, tech, just a technical question: Is there yeah. how does this work? Is there like some sort of 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 legislation or something that like that this was formed on that keeps us keeps it here? If I if I recall, there's something that doesn't something official exist that allows us or no. Not, um, not, <laughs> not at this time because there's, there's like no um, funding for this group per se. Um, when this eventually evolves into a formal arts commission, that will require mm -hmm. some legislation. Um, and also, when you know, when this group gets into figuring out what to do with some of the money in the arts equity fund or the AEF, um, that will, will that will get into some legislation as well. But there's nothing that like formalizes our existence necessarily. It's it's sort of uh, informal. Got it. Okay. But just, there's just a, there is a, oh, there is already a city percent for art ordinance on the book. So the equity arts fund is a mayoral initiative, but the percent for art ordinance exists. So there's already an imperative for any administration incoming or outgoing to move forward. Right, thank you, Bree. Okay, let me just make sure no one else is in the waiting room. Um, okay, so are you seeing the agenda here? Yes. Okay, cool. So yeah, so what this is a subcommittee of the AC3, as you know, this is uh, looking at the Creative Community Empowerment Plan or the CSEP, we can call it. Uh, that's a working title, you know, we could kind of do whatever we want with it, but um, this is focused on um, sort of kickstarting that process of developing what is, you know, generically called an arts master plan. Uh, that's sort of the category of, of plan that I would put this under. Uh, something that's never been done for Rochester before, uh, but something that's uh, been been called for in the Rochester 2034 comprehensive plan. And again, something that Mayor Warren called for in her State of the Union, uh, excuse me, State of the City address recently. So. Um, we, as, as the AC3 and particularly the subcommittee, will be kind of uh, steering the ship here with, with the development of this arts master plan. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to give you kind of an overview of, of, of generally what that is. Uh, we've touched on it a little bit before, but just to reiterate it. And then we're going to get into um, a kind of a, a group exercise to kind of prioritize some, some issues that we think should be covered in that plan. And then just kind of open it up to a sort of a more informal, broader discussion about what everyone hopes to get out of uh, an arts master plan for, for the city of Rochester and the surrounding area. And then we'll wrap it up and talk about next steps. Okay. So um, this is the overview that I emailed yesterday, I believe, and hopefully everyone has had a chance to take a look at it. 
uh, just kind of a three pager kind of explaining what the what the CSEP might look like. I will not bore you by reading all three pages right now. Just kind of skim here to kind of remind everybody. Um, but essentially, this is again a, a, an arts master plan for uh, the the creative ecosystem that we have here in Rochester, um, recognizing that we're not maybe not reaching our full potential with all the talent that we have here in Rochester, and also recognizing that we don't have like the organizational capacity that we've had in the past or would like to have in the future with uh, you know some sort of an arts champion or advocacy organization to partner with the city. So the CSEP is, is meant to, uh, one, one piece of it is to help sort of um, plot the path for creating um, an, an arts organization like that. Um, this is sort of the precursor to the formal arts commission um, that as I mentioned earlier, would require some legislation down the road to go with the percent for arts ordinance and, and sort of more formally manage that process. Um, but in recognizing that there's a lot more that we could do within our sort of arts and creative ecosystem here in Rochester, you don't just hope for those things to happen. You don't just have a couple of side conversations with folks to try and make things happen. We come together and make a plan, right? And, and we don't have any illusions that this plan is going to flip a switch and solve any problems overnight. Um, but we also can't just sit around and again, hope for those things to, to advance. So we, we want to make a plan for what we hope to see in the future for this community as it relates to our uh, creative class and, and all the folks involved with that. So that's kind of what we hope to get out of this plan. It's probably going to be, you know, in the neighborhood of a year long process. Um, it's going to be this sub subcommittee plus the rest of the AC3 folks working with some sort of, sort of consultant team to uh, develop the plan. Uh, but that's, you know, they're really just going to be a resource. We're going to be driving that, we meaning all of us here, not just the city, uh, but the consultant's really just going to be a resource to help facilitate the process learn from other cities, develop the actual document and make it look, you know, really graphically appealing and user friendly. So, um, but the content of the plan itself, let's just talk about that. Because again, uh, as, as far as I'm aware, none of us here have really ever done this kind of arts master plan, at least not, not for Rochester. So this is sort of new for all of us. Um, I'm as a, as a planner, as a city planner, I'm very familiar with developing community plans of, of many different shapes and sizes. I haven't done an arts one before, so that'll be new, but I do, you know, I've, I have a lot of expertise around just sort of the, the bones of developing a community plan, regardless of the topic. Um, so I wanna just throw out some ideas tonight of what I think this could potentially cover and then and then bounce that off of all of you and see what are we missing? What, what else do you hope to accomplish with it? So some of those ideas include, again, um, they're numbered here. I think there's 10 of them, for obviously forming a, a formal city arts commission. Um, I'm going to run through these real quick, and then I'm actually going to have each of you take a little Zoom poll to tell me which ones you think are most important for our community. So keep that in mind as I quickly run through this. Um, there, as you know, the Rochester 2034 Comprehensive Plan has an arts and culture section in it. There are several goals and strategies already laid out in that plan. So we're not starting from scratch with this issue of developing an arts master plan. There's some great ideas. Annette gave a lot of great feedback to help with that section of the plan. If you haven't seen that section of the plan, there's a link right there in the overview uh, document. You can click on it, it'll take you to a PDF of that section. Strongly, strongly encourage, maybe there's a prerequisite for this subcommittee, everyone to read through that. It's not very long, 10 pages or something like that. Um, and understand what are the ideas that are already sort of out there. So for this master plan, how can we sort of build on that? Because it's that section of the plan is not like the complete picture of what we should do for the arts and culture community. So read that as a foundation and think about how can we build on that. You don't need to read it now, just later. Um, we have to think about the economic impacts of the arts and creative community and how this plan can help us enhance that both for the artists themselves uh, and for the community uh, as a whole, because it, it's, it is a huge economic engine um, 
to, to you know, bring visitors to our community to appreciate the arts. Um, we need to be thinking about um, a, sort of a sustainable and coordinated approach to programming uh, the arts in our parks and public spaces. And this really gets into um, Sarah Scott's world. Sarah is with our Department of um, Recreation and Human Services. And she does a lot of work with, with programming um, our, in, in our rec centers and in our, in our parks. And there are a lot of organizations that do that kind of work as well. So there were, again, not starting from scratch, but how can we enhance that, uh, that effort? Um, how can we improve access to the arts? Uh, this is addressing equity, geography, the infrastructure of it all, promotions, coordination, all that sort of thing. How can we make it more accessible um, for participants and, and artists themselves? Number seven, how can we amplify the artistic expression of marginalized, marginalized populations? I know this is gonna be really important. It's important to me and, and other folks as well. So the plan could sort of get into that, develop strategies around it. Again, not starting from scratch, but let's build on it. And this one might be a little bit of a stretch, but um, we, working with Sarah, Scott, again, we hope to develop a Parks and Recreation Master Plan as a separate planning process. We don't have funding for that, but if, if and when we do get funding for that, there's some overlap um, between an Arts Master Plan and a Parks and Recreation Master Plan. So how can our effort complement and build on what's being done in, in a parks plan? And then just two more. Um, how can we provide a more robust pipeline for the development of artists? Um, and I know uh, Sean and others have talked about this quite a bit in, in the past, you know, just helping folks develop their, their skills and being able to respond to calls for public art um, so that we have more sort of homegrown talent that can participate uh, and that sort of thing. And then lastly, just generally, when you think about the, uh, your daily experience, walking around the city, right, biking around the city, driving around the city, interacting with folks, how can we create more artistic presence in, in, in our public spaces and our streets and on our buildings so that, you know, as you're, as you're walking around the city, around every corner, you might expect to find something surprising and enticing that, that, that draws you in, and uh, whether it's a mural or some sort of play apparatus or um, just some, you know, some, some light, lighting being projected on a building. You know, what can we do to um, spread this more throughout the city? Um, and, and Sean's working on a grant with RIT that, that would really get into that a little bit. So more on that later. So those are the um, just 10 ideas. It's not a, not a complete list. Um, that, no, that we want to think about for for this master plan, and I want to hear from you now about among those what is um, you know what is most important to you, and we'll do a little poll here. Give me one second. Before I get into the poll, let me just sort of preface this with any with a few things. Um, one, I'm going to ask <clears> you <throat> five out of ten. Your five five most important out of ten. This is not a scientific poll. This isn't gonna like, in, like dis definitively say we're covering this and we're not covering that in the plan. This is really just to sort of generally take your temperature about what you think is most important um, in, in this kind of an effort. Um, so items that might fall a little bit lower uh, in the ranking, that doesn't mean we're not gonna cover them necessarily. Just wanna see what's most important to you. Um, so let's see. Also, as I mentioned, there's there's room for other issues to be covered here. So if you've got a really important issue and it's not in these top 10, that doesn't mean we won't cover it. This is just a starter conversation. Okay. Um, so let me pull up the poll and I'll give you just a, we'll just have a few minutes of silence, I guess, for folks to read through them and vote on them and choose any five. And, and this is a live thing, so I'll be able to share the results afterwards, and then we can just have a general conversation. So before I launch it, any questions about this, this simple little exercise here? Sound good? Hearing none? Let's see how this works. Uh, actually, I'm gonna, hold on, let me stop sharing screen. Can I do that? 
Oh, hold on. Don't vote yet. Don't vote yet. <laughs> I've never actually done this. Let me stop my share. And then let me launch it again. <laughs> Evan, you want suggestions for additional? Um, not, not in this poll. Oh, hold on. Christina's waiting away. Not during this poll, but as a follow up conversation. Because uh, the poll doesn't make space for um, additional converse, or additional items, but we can certainly put more on the table afterwards. Yeah, I just see, feel like the question of funding and directing funds to what's already happening, I personally am not seeing that. Maybe you feel like it's built into some of the other language. I see that it's just so central to this conversation. Sure. How the city government exercises fiduciary support ushers more funding to what's already happening. I just see that as central to this. Maybe you see that in illustrated in one of those bullet points, but I, I might've missed it. Do you feel yeah, like it's already there? No, I hear that. It's, I mean, it's sort of buried a little bit. Um, so I would, I would consider that just sort of a, a, a follow on suggestion after this poll that um, again, where this is not going to like definitively decide what's in and out. So I'm, I'm sure we're gonna get into funding type issues um during this planning process so that's definitely on the table um can everybody see the 10 items right now no i um i i apologize i have i'll have to just weigh in later um i had to take my son to a sports thing so i'm in a car <laughs> on a phone oh yeah sorry about that Bree. no 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 worries okay nice. how about now is it visible yes okay so why don't we just take a couple minutes i think you can expand the window on your side so you can see all 10, just take a couple minutes, choose your favorite five that you think are most important for the community. And, um, and then I'll share the results afterwards. And Christina asks, I, cause she can't see them right now and Bree's on the phone. Um, can you submit yours later? Absolutely, that's, that's a good point. So you have the document, the, the CSEP overview and it lists those 10 in there. Uh, so feel free to, send those to me now in the chat or email me later and I'll, you know, sort of figure this into it. Um, yeah, but again, this is, this is mostly just a conversation starter. I'll give you all one more minute and then ask you to raise your hand if you need more time. So one more minute.
looks like eight out of 13 of you have voted. Well, I'll say eight out of 12, because I think I'm one of those 13. Okay, raise your hand if you haven't finished yet, other than those that will send me their results later. Anybody need another minute? Okay. So I'm gonna end the polling now and share results and let's see how this works. Can you see the results right now? Yep, yes. Okay, so give me one second here because I can't see that on my little screen very well. 100% um, of you agreed that establishing the Arts Commission is, is something we have to do, no surprise there. Uh, and if you didn't agree, we'd have a real problem, I guess. Um, number six was next, uh, received the next most votes, improve access to the arts, uh, equity, geography, infrastructure, promotions and coordination. And right behind that, amplifying the artistic expression of marginalized populations. Those are obviously very closely related. And then it looks like next would be about the economic impact of the arts, uh, establishing a nonprofit arts alliance organization is really important, uh, as are nine and 10 here. The robust pipeline for the development of artists and nurturing a culture of arts filled spaces and experiences. <laughs> Um, a little bit lower on the list is the Parks Master Plan and the uh, Advancing the Strategies in the 2034 Plan. So, um, okay, this is great. Um, I'm going to do, I don't know how to save this, so I'm just going to do a quick screenshot so that I don't lose those results. Got it. Everybody okay if I close it now? Yeah. So hopefully that um, served as a, as a bit of an icebreaker to, to get into this a little more. And um, Lou made a really great point about, you know, how do we address the funding side of this, especially as it relates to funding existing assets, um, organizations, facilities, and venues, and that sort of thing. So that's that's definitely going to be part of the planning effort. So let's just open it up from there. What are your general thoughts? Uh, what else do you think we need to make sure we we cover in this process? Can I just ask a question first? Uh, um, if we so the Arts Commission, I just want a clarification. I think can the Arts Commission become this broader arts organization, or can it, I wonder what the sort of, well, maybe even fiduciary conflicts might be with like, look, so can this Arts Commission become in a sense the Arts Council or what the Arts Council was? Um, you know, in sense, disseminating money from NISCA, et cetera. Can, or is that really prohibitive by being part of the city's umbrella? <laughs> I, I just wonder if there, if there maybe there's not, no, no conflict. I'm just wondering down the road, we, you know, we put all this work into this and it quite frankly should become the Arts Council. Um, yeah. So if it can't become the Arts Council, maybe we should know that up front. Um, and maybe there'll have to be two different organizations. So I, I'm just wondering what's, if you know anything about you know, just the legality, I guess, about that. Yeah. Right. My initial thought, and I'll say that I'll keep saying this to you guys. Uh, this is not my area of expertise. I'm just a facilitator. But my initial thought is that's probably on the table. But Bree, I'm gonna Bree, I'm gonna put you on the spot because I know that you've done some research into different models in other cities, and maybe some of you other folks have experience. Is that a potential model, Bree, where the Arts Commission that kind of makes decisions about uh, how to spend uh, one percent for the arts kind of funds? Can that be the same organization as sort of a broader community alliance organization? Have you seen a model like that? Um, so one thing I can do that would be helpful is I can try and update. I did a very quick spreadsheet a few years ago yeah, that had no just problem. cities and what their, you know, if, if it is a chartered organization under the city charter, it cannot be a 501c3 
and I do not believe that it would be in its best interest to accept and redistribute the funds. But there are several examples of cities where a separate one, 501c3 is commissioned by the city to act oh. as the arts commission and also do other things under its umbrella and purview, right? It's like a public private partnership. Oh, I see. Agree. So, like, NISCA funds so can only be distributed by a 501c3? Right, uh, right. So, so yeah. If, so, if I it was a city commission, then the city could not be then distributing the NISCA funds. Yeah, dis yeah, or even apply. The city wouldn't even be able to apply right. for NISCA funds. But there are, you know, so I think one of the things that would be early to be explored by the agency that is doing this master plan is, you know, what is the temperature for highest need of, you know, I, I tell me if I'm wrong and you guys are way better at this, but my understanding is that another county helps to distribute our county funds right now. How much of a, yeah. of, of a priority yeah. is to have that be recentered here, right? So that's okay. the highest oh, priority. That high priority. <laughs> All DEC grants are administered by Genesee Valley and they have not been in our city, in our neighborhoods, in our art institutions, no disrespect to the work, but they have, and, and this is a challenge because they're disseminating grants that go right into our pool. And, and your also funds being now, lost right now because of that dynamic. That's right. Yeah. Right now, because of NISCA's short oh. new turnaround, because of the. Do you guys have a basket? Support, yeah. That fund's being lost. So um, let me see if I can, if it is helpful. Oh, yeah. Can sorry. Let me see if I can update the old. Yeah. Sorry. There's, that I there's, have. A, there's some background noise coming from someone's phone. May, maybe Olivia's. Um, also, that's um, that that's I, I missed. Oh a lot shoot! Of what, what, what I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, so I, I missed a lot of what Blue said, and and um, and I also had something. I we were actually talking at the same time, but I couldn't hear that because there was something. I got confused. I think she's on mute now. Thank, thank you, Rena. Um, sorry, I just real quick, I'd be happy to update this sheet that just had some of the examples of cities with quick links to kind of their structure. Let me see if I can update that just for help. But, um, but there are lots of examples of different structures. It is possible, but it would that would be an early question for the next administration, I think. Yeah. I do not believe this administration was interested in, in having it be a public-private partnership, but I think the next administration might be more open to that. Yeah, so that that's great, Bree. Once once you have that set, um, send me that spreadsheet, and I will put it on our Google Docs folder so everybody can see. She did some really great work to look into how all these other cities are, are set up, and and I think Thomas, to answer your question, I think it's on the table, um, and it's certainly something that a consultant would explore with us is different models and what's the one that makes the most sense for Rochester. Yeah, thank you. I think for us, we that has to be on the table. I mean, we really. We have to have this. So um, how we get there is a different system. Yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry, Matt. Oh, it's okay. I just want to let you know that I just recently talked to CNY Arts. They're the Arts Council for Syracuse. And they um, operated as an NGO of the county um, for a period. Um, but they're still housed in the county office building. So they have space. They have staff. They have a big budget. Um, and a lot of it is from administering the DEC grants from NISCA. So um, it is definitely beneficial to bring it back to Rochester to find a way to do that. Thanks. Rena, did you want to add something to that? Um, yeah, I definitely say high priority, but uh, one of the other reasons has to do with is there like who is be, who is proactive right now about actually cultivating those funds from uh, from NISCA and and other sources and and that's that's something that Genesee Valley Arts is not you know is not pro, you know proactive in our community in that way and I'm also interested Annette in CNY Arts. I believe they are. They actually do. Um, you know, they're looking for these kinds of, of 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 funds and actually also also taking them in. They're they're not just, you know, it's not just one designated. Like obviously, DEC is one, but I believe they're also they actively pursue grants that they can that uh, that that they can do, that we can that artists and um, arts organizations are benefiting from. Oh yeah, they have a huge program specifically related to filmmaking. 
in Syracuse because there's a sound stage there. Um, and so they're getting a lot of funding through that. And they also partnered with their um, equivalent of Visit Rochester to create this event calendar that all artists and arts organizations could put their own information in and it, you know benefits to them all as well. So yeah, they're very they're very assertive in, in their seeking of funding and, and how they operate. They also had an endowment to start with. So that was one. Oh wow. Yeah, so that's a big difference from what you know the model we had here. Another um, thing that you wouldn't be able to do as a, if it was city, um, if right. it was a house city, we would not be able to uh, secure an endowment. Yeah. Right. So I think, you know, as a partner, the city could be a partner, but I think it does have to be a separate entity um, to, to really fully operate um, the way it would be intended to. On the, on the opposite side of that coin, then, of course, if we create this other kind of separate, then that organization also can't really do this 1%, be in charge of this 1% for the arts money either, because then that's a different. So I, right. I, we do need to figure this out because I think both of those things are necessary and we need them both. So we do need to figure that out. Right. But, but that, probably... organ, that other organization could be a, uh, a, could apply for and or be a beneficiary of that, of that 1% of the arts. Yeah. Like if there, yeah. you know what yeah, I mean? If, right. Sure. Oh yeah. I just, my just, my feeling is that we just need two organizations so that this money gets disseminated in a okay equitable way. So however we do it, but we just need to do that. <laughs> right. And, and keep in mind that it's entirely possible that the money that the Arts Commission uh, disseminates, the formal city organization disseminates, will, will potentially be entirely focused or mostly focused on capital art, on physical public art, whereas an Arts, arts Alliance organization um, is going to be more is, is going to be covering all of all of the arts, all different uh, media and genres uh, within that. So that's that's something we still have to figure out. But bottom line is the model is something that will very much be a part of this planning process. And we hope to find a consultant that has experience with um, seeing different models in other cities and charting a path for us to 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 get to the model that we need here. So that's definitely on the table. Um, beyond that, what are what are folks' other thoughts about what this planning process should cover, and what's what's really important to you? What's the oh. timeline for something like this, Kevin? I I see, you know, being maybe a more asthmatic personality my tendency is like to say, okay, how are we going to, wh what, what's the timeline here? And when are we going to start getting, you know, results? How, when are we going to start getting that 1% for the arts actually into artists' hands and seeing the results, you know, sure. so then to sort of back from that, how long do we go through such a planning process? Um, just to cut right to the chase. Yeah. Uh, I like that you said an asthmatic personality. That's that's cool. Um, I I think typically these processes are in the neighborhood of a year. Um, however, because of the efforts of the AC3 in general and the Arts Investment Guidance Subcommittee, our, our counterparts, um, there's we're going to get started as soon as possible and getting getting money out into the community because the city has already set aside some money in this arts equity fund just a matter of that other group quickly developing a process for and you know parameters around how that money gets spent and how folks can apply for it and that sort of thing. So as soon as we get that little sort of interim process going, we can start getting money out into the community. And in all likelihood, that will be well before a CSEP is completed. Uh, so the CSEP will result in a more, maybe a more elaborate, formalized, adopted process. That, that goes with an, an established uh, commission that does that does require some legislation. Um, so it's kind of the, the, the more advanced version of what this other subcommittee can do right now.
Did, did we miss anything on that list? Do you, you all think is important to just think big picture about the arts ecosystem, the creative ecosystem, and uh, maybe maybe any shortcomings it has right now or things where we're missing the mark and that a planning process, a collaborative process might help? Um, I might have missed this, but um, does it talk about advocacy any place in here or? Again, sort of buried, I, I guess I would think of it as um, the establishment of the Alliance organization would be primarily responsible for that kind of advocacy. And, and again, depending on the model, if the Arts Commission, depending on what the Arts Commission looks like, they might have an advocacy role as well or partner with the Alliance to do that kind of work. So I, I think that's going to be part of it. Well, I brought up um, this point in an earlier meeting, just the idea of, um, you know, some way to kind of more more formally, uh, uh, I don't, I, you know, document definitely moving forward or track moving forward, but also going back and taking a look at what we have, you know, where, where you know, where arts, um, uh, where, the, where this kind of work lives in our city um, geographically, but also where um, we have, we've, we've been, even though I know it's, you know, everybody keeps saying it's not a lot. We haven't been doing a lot. We haven't been doing a lot, yeah. but we have been doing something, you know? Um, and so I, I don't know if, 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 if that, that needs to be kept, you know, kind of captured as a priority for us to really actually take a look at that, at what has been happening and track and sort of see what has been happening and then a process for moving forward so that we keep capturing that, you know, we keep tracking. I was that. thinking that as well, Rena, that has, I know you mentioned that in a couple prior meetings, like asking for some type of accounting of the past, just, you know, not to fixate on it, but in order to look forward, right? Mm -hmm seems to me that's a priority to understand how arts funding has been spent where to whom what amounts all that stuff it's it's the big part of of equity you know um having an equitable moving you know kind of path forward to me for for me it really is um you know to be able to say when it gets down to it us to be able to say okay this is something that has been you know or somewhere it, it has been supported here's somewhere that it's it's lacking I, I think it's important for us to look at that as we talk about equity uh, you know an equitable path moving forward yeah thank you and and Rita would you say that that you're thinking primarily about like financially how we've invested or do you think that it's also um just sort of uh, taking stock of, of the various organizations in the community that, that really contribute to that in addition to the city? But, uh, I think I think all, both and okay. all, yeah. Okay, cool. But like to be clear, Rena, you're, you're re-asking for what something you had mentioned before, right? That was to understand how funds have been spent in the past. Yes, um, definitely. How, where, to whom, <laughs> all, all of that. And, 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 to, and to, you know, again, to, to create a mechanism for actually tracking that, you know, moving forward too. That's, that's so a critical have... part. Yeah, that's a good point. A so we, we need like a graph, we need some kind of like, uh, what do you call it? Graph sheet. Or... I'm sorry, <laughs> I forget what it's called. That shows, you know, the a a pie spreadsheet. Chart. Spreadsheet. <laughs> spreadsheet. A spreadsheet that spreadsheet. shows. And I couldn't get it. The spreadsheet that shows the list what's been happening. So it's you know black and white. So we can just kind of look through that and see what and understand the history. You're right. We can't really move forward without understanding the history. Um, and and from my understanding, the history has been very different under different administrations. <laughs> Right. Maybe take the last five one years of the days. Yeah. One of the things. Hey, Kevin. Oh. Kevin, yeah. is it worth asking Justin again? Because we started working on that, and it was. I, I think it's worth asking him again if we can share something. Please. Yeah. Yeah. We'll we'll look into that. Um, 
we started putting something some some initial yeah. pieces together from different departments and it was kind of slowed and i would like to ask again yes yeah um how do i put it delicately that, that uh, yeah we, we kind of know you can't really share stuff well but, but well, this no, this, this, I, but this, commit, that... this group really is going to need to be able to have some um uh, have some kind of way of uh, we can't be left in the dark if we're gonna mm -hmm. maybe that's the way to say it we can't be left in the dark if we're going to move us forward and you know, we, we're moving into so that this no man's land we have no idea where we came from what we're what's going on right now so maybe that's a way to you can yeah i understand your situation <laughs> um but maybe, maybe the committee should spoil it maybe the committee needs to intervene actually yeah. maybe I, I have a question, question. Go ahead. Sorry, Brie. Didn't, Brie was talking. I interrupted her. No, no, no. You're fine. I, was, I, I was joking. The committee, not not joking. The committee should FOIL. Should, they, we should put a FOIL request in. Yeah. Well, I, I think the point, the main point is that obviously, despite a lot of great efforts by a lot of awesome people, including some of the folks on this call, the way that things have worked doesn't, isn't, isn't working and is broken. So I don't know how much time, I mean, I do think that information should be available, but I feel like what I think that this group has the opportunity to do is create a vision for how we want this to work going forward and implement that vision and not spend a ton of time looking back on a system that clearly hasn't worked right or we wouldn't all be here. So that's just my thought about it. And the only we don't want to harper on the past, but we do want to sort of understand what happened so that we can kind of fix that or you know yeah. not do that again or whatever it is. And, there, and there's two things, the system, but then also just the actual data, you know, like, it, it, I, I don't think we're, it's much as much about the system that the broken system that kind of got us here, as much as it really is about, uh, I'm, even though that isn't a part of it, right, we do want to kind of understand a, a little bit of that, but not to harp on that, but some of it really is the data, you know, for me moving forward, because it, again, I'll just take geographically. You know, if I were to sit and look at a map and say, where has, you know, maybe public art, you know, been invested in, in our, in our city um, the most, I, I might be less likely, you know, to want to prioritize, you know, that area again, if we're moving forward, you know, that might be just a very basic way I would want to look at that and say, yeah. all right, cool. This is where a good portion of our public art lives here's where zero of it actually lives, you know? Um, and, and, and that's just geographical, but then there's all these other, other ways in which that data would actually inform, you know, some of our decision-making and even the creation of a, of a more equitable process moving forward. Mm -hmm. Yeah, great so, point. Ge geography is a big part of this. And, I, and I, don't, I don't think you'd be surprised if we mapped it right now. I don't think you'd be surprised that there's, public art is really lacking in most of our neighborhoods. It's focused downtown, parks along the river, up at the port, um, you know, with a few exceptions. Um, so there are neighborhoods across the city that, that are lacking and, and we're gonna have to start having some conversations about how to prioritize. And uh, there's, there's, there's a lot of gaps for sure. So one of the things that um, Rock Arts United had been advocating for with the 2034 plan and it was included on the plan was that the city start earmarking all arts funding um, across departments because I do mm -hmm. understand that that can be very difficult to track because people have extra funds that they can they can do there's a little bit of extra cushy money in some places and it gets spent on the arts and and finding out how the city is contributing to public art broadly but then also how the city is spending funding on ways in which they hire a local graphic designer or they hire a local painter or they all of those things wind up equating to local arts funding so i really do think that if this committee has an, any ability to create extra pressure um I'm, I'm disappointed that that wasn't included in the budget this year and i really do think that it should be going forward um, and, and, and I, I think that that's the kind of data that Rena's asking for that going, looking backwards is going to be difficult to 
track down every penny, but going forward, if we really encourage that ha to happen now on a regular basis, we will start to accumulate that data and to see where all of that yeah. money is going across the departments in the city. Um, the other thing is one of the things that Rock Arts United has been working on is aggregating data of art spaces in the city because we all know that there are many spaces that aren't getting funding but actually finding out who is in those spaces and what their work is, is a monumental task that no one really has a full catalog of yet. Um, so there's a couple different groups in the city that have started small catalogs, but Roberts United has really been working on, on getting all of that information together. And that will also be helpful in determining, you know, if one sector of the city is receiving a lot of funding, but they have a really small number of art organizations there, then that's an, another determining factor. Like where else right. can we slide some of those funds where there might be a denser group of artists and organizations that might not be receiving as much money. Sure. Thanks, Amanda. Yeah, and you know, I'll just offer a few little tidbits because I did sort of start the process of digging into um, you know, past investments with a, with a lot of help from from Bree and Sarah and others on city staff. Um, couple just a couple of notes about what I've started to find because it's 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 a pain in the butt to find it, but that doesn't mean we should stop. Um, one is there really isn't much data that I can find that goes earlier than when the percent for arts ordinance happened in 07 or 08 around that. It's it's difficult to find data earlier than that. So we might have to be okay with the last 14 years or so. Um, the other thing is it's easier to find information about how much money was spent on capital art, on physical public art, than it is on sort of the softer side of art, like throwing a little bit of money towards this organization or this um, cultural event or that sort of thing. So that's a little bit softer, a little bit harder to, to figure out. Um, and same goes for um, you know the the money that gets spent through special events, which is part of Justin's office. It becomes a question of how do you define investing in art, right? Because the, they put X amount of dollars into say a French festival, uh, which is an arts festival, but a certain percentage of that goes towards you know setting up barriers and funding the police the, to help with security and a bunch of logistical things that aren't art per se, but they're contributing to an arts experience. So how do you define whether or not that money was spent on the arts or not? So it becomes a little trickier when you get into special event stuff and when you get out of the world of, you know, capital public art. Um, but we can do our best to, to dig into the, the easier to, sort of the easier to track data, knowing that there's additional data or additional efforts into the art. I think that, that setting a, a, a parameter that mm -hmm. can be followed into the future for exactly what is defined as arts funding is the kind of thing that this group could also do. Yes, awesome. And then, yes, you can say, you can say this is, sorry, go ahead. Uh, just uh, um, adding to what Amanda said, and even just and a lot of a lot of, uh, of funders do this also, and money that is going directly to artists as well, you know, versus administratively and you know and and otherwise, right? Right, right. And again, keep in mind, um, you know, we could we could do whatever we can to track past investments into arts organizations and performances and that sort of thing. That doesn't necessarily mean that the, the AEF, the Arts Equity Fund moving forward is, is going to be able to continue that kind of investment. Uh, those investments might need to come through a new arts alliance of, of some kind. Um, so I just, I, you know, I just wanna sort of temper expectations up front of, of where this may or may not be able to go. Other final thoughts about uh, what you hope to, to cover in the plan before we start to wrap things up here? No, okay, great. Um, let me just say uh, something brief about the consultant side of things. Um, hold on one second, let me pull up the document. This is the last piece of the, um, 
CSEP overview PDF that I sent you all, just, just general thoughts about a consultant. So I used to be a consultant uh, as, a, as a planning consultant before I worked at City Hall. I work with consultants now. So it's very easy for me to take for granted um, that not everybody knows what, what we're talking about when we talk about consultants, when we talk about RFPs. And so I apologize if I just kind of loosely throw these those things out and, and make assumptions about what everybody knows about that. But um, a consultant for a project like this, I think in all likelihood would be a team of consultants. Um, and in fact, I, I, I would recommend that we encourage that in, in the notice, the, the RFP for, for this project, that it might be some combination of um, folks that uh, they're, you know, an organization, or I'm sorry, a consultant that's in another city that has done this work in uh, lots of different cities. Um, I'm not aware of a design firm, consulting firm locally that has specifically done this kind of thing in Rochester. Um, so we might need to look to some folks that are outside of Rochester and then perhaps encourage them to team with some local folks uh, that, that can help with the process. Keeping in mind, they're already starting with an awesome team right here with AC3, all you folks, because the local presence, I think, is really important for sort of institutional knowledge and, and knowledge of the history of the arts community here. And, and they're gonna inform that. That's, that's an important part of the local presence of the consultant team. But it's also, the local presence is also really important for how we go out into the community and talk to folks and hear from them about what's important to them and changes that we can make. So if that's like the important parts of a local presence, we've already got that with this, with this team right here. Maybe it gets enhanced by some other folks locally that would be part of a paid consultant team to sort of help facilitate that work. But I think we're already starting with a, with a great team right here that will partner with a consulting firm. So I've just done a little bit of research and I've found a few firms that kind of specialize in doing these kind of arts and creative master plans. Um, so we certainly can send the RFP directly to them and see if they're interested in responding. Um, but then I have a few ways that we can sort of put it out broadly to different listservs and websites and that sort of thing that will hopefully get a good response. And, and again, do the same locally to see if there are some companies or organizations locally that, that would want to partner. Kevin, um, so for myself, I, not anything against consultants, but, um, <laughs> The word consultant in a situation like this is a little red flaggy to me. I have seen art proposals written by consultancy agencies for other cities and watch them go up in flames. Okay. Um, I have, it like crash and burn, huge problem, flames, like flames. Um, like what kind of a project were like they that wrong? happened in Manhattan a couple of years ago like Manhattan's arts arts plan was in flames because it was so outside of the community despite the fact that they did try to have a, a, a tandem group from the community working with the consulting agency um, so if we're actually talking about hiring in someone from an outside community first of all I would want to have a detailed engagement with not only the people who work in the arts in an administrative level in the community that they have served, but artists in that community. So we have a perspective from the actual boots on the ground people in the community, knowing how that plan has been implemented actually impacts those individual people. I would also really want to encourage looking at agencies from the Rust Belt because segregation and racism happens around the Great Lakes in a way that is so reflective of the industrial age. Hmm. I think that there's a lot of communities around the Great Lakes who specifically face similar challenges in redlining, in um, segregated schools, in um, inequitable uh, distribution of funds, I would not be looking at communities further out west or from the south because those are really different cultural histories mm -hmm. and it's not going to have a similar um, 
economic understanding of, of what's going on in our area. Um, and then finally, I would not hire anyone, anyone, unless at least 50% of their team was black or brown. I, I will tell you that right now. I'm not gonna live in a majority, major, majority minority city and hire in a consulting firm that's all white people. Okay, I, we can't do that. We absolutely cannot do that. So I have an idea, may I pitch something? Yeah. I hate RFPs because it becomes this open process. I like RFIs where there's a cultured right. pre-request process where we submit letters directly to agencies to determine whether or not they're a good fit for us before we refine and finalize a proposal development. And we've already then narrowed it down to agencies that are pre-meeting some of the expectations we have versus an open call where we're gonna get a ton of proposals from firms that might not meet the selection criteria. Um, the, the, you know, I, I just think it'd be better to do some more research up front and to do the simpler RFI which is, is easier because basically what we're saying to them is that we're not asking you to put together a whole team and pr provide a Rochester-based proposal yet. What we want you to do is t answer these quick and basic questions and provide us with the examples that we can look at on our own and determine if you're a good fit for us to go to the next step. So Bree, uh, that's, that's an interesting, interesting suggestion. And Amanda, I definitely hear your, your concerns there. And I've, um, having worked for a consultant and with consultants here at the city, I've had some good and bad experiences so that we have to be very careful. So I hear that. Um, so Bree, with your um, suggestion there, and for folks that aren't familiar, there's RFP, which is request for proposals. Um, there's RFQ, which is request for qualifications. And then there's RFI, which I honestly hadn't thought of, which is request for interest. Um, Bree, could you characterize the difference between an RFQ and an RFI? Um, I mean, sometimes it can be used interchangeably. I think we're getting it's like semantics, but the idea oh, okay. is that so that's pretty much ultimately, the same. right? Almost right. But, but what we're trying to say is that, hey, listen, you're a firm we might be interested in. Don't because it takes, and I want to be respectful of everyone's time, right? It takes time for us to read these proposals. It takes yeah. time for firms to put these proposals together. If they're not going to be a good fit for us, why are we bothering? Right. So if we are able to pre screen based on a simpler, more basic form, I think we'll get better response rate anyway, because it shows that this committee is being very deliberate in who we're looking for. Yeah. And so it's, it's, it, it may, you know, it takes a two step process then, right? Because you still ultimately need a proposal and a breakdown of, of the hours and who's going to be in the team and what they're going to charge and all that and, and the deliverables. But it also buys us some time to read some of the examples that are out there. From, and decide what we like. Because sometimes when you write an RFP, you don't always know what you want. Right. You know, um, Kevin, you and I are going through something right now that is also, I think, uh, informative on this. And, you know, and, and part of this, the, what we need to do ahead of time is decide what is it exactly we want this consultant to do? Is this going to be sort of almost a mechanical, um, uh, outline of, of how you do a plan without them being involved in the um, so really in the subject matter and and Kevin and I are working now on a on a zoning code rewrite and um, our we, we've hired a consultant that's working with us and and yet we're actually in-house doing most of the um, substantive work the the actual, subject matter work and they're kind of doing the framework for it all so in a way it you know amanda's comment about um the, the who these people are and depending on what we decide we want them to do um th that matters more and less um depending on on you know how much we're going to do so um I think the first step is Am what, I gonna get what do we want a consultant to do for us? What what does this what is the role of this consultant? Hold, hold up, Joanna. Am I getting paid for to do any of that stuff? Because <laughs> if the consultant is getting paid, then they can do that work. And then they can also be in a line with the people who are in our city. Because yeah, I'm I'm more than healthy ha happy to help. 
and to lend a hand, but I am not going to do all the legwork and still be making, you know, essentially what amounts to about $5 an hour adjuncting 80 hours a week on top of <laughs> all of this stuff. But one thing no, I want to think about too is, is I, you know, I don't think, and I'll stick my neck out on this. We've paid, the library has paid for stipends for folks in the past to serve on committees. I, I think we, you know, we're not saying that that's not going to happen. My, my, my issue right now is that I don't know, and I think this is what Johanna's thinking at, whose scope of work is what? I would rather make the budget for a consultant lower so that we can pay participation stipends to community members who are going to actually put in the work. But I, but I, I going back to the idea that I don't, I could not right now document a comprehensive RFP to send out to a consulting group today, because even with the list narrowed down from these 10 items, I'm not exactly clear what we're asking for yet. So we, I, this buys some time, doesn't it? So, to figure that out further. Go ahead, I, I agree with a lot of that. Just the, I've been hesitant on the, on the commitment to, to external expert external consultant slash expert on this, when we're also saying that we need all of these experts around the table in order to inform <laughs> that expert how to do this. And I just think, you know, to Amanda's point, Rena's and others, we're, we're always talking about how we, we want to learn from other areas, but we also want to make sure we're doing something that is respectful and appropriate scale, et cetera, to our community, right? And that's why we're all here because we know different nuanced portions of our community, right? And, and I just, I want to toss the question out there. Do, is it really, do we really need an independent RFP? Do we really, RFP, Q, or I, do we really need um, an external expert on this? Or should we be finding the local people and or some of those around the table here to be, be paid and or invested into add on to the research they've already done, looking at those other arts master plans and other benchmark communities to refine and implement that here um, through the lens and through the input of all of us who are already at the table. Yeah, I think Blue it brings up a good enemy and it brings up a good point. We have been through this before, um, you know, where it did not really work out very well with the outside consultant with the Memorial Art Gallery Park. And so I do, I also have some hesitation about that, which is why I suggested that we do this with a with local person as well. Um, I think we do need the RFI actually, but I think we maybe need to rethink how that is implemented. <clears throat> um, maybe the outside consultant, if that's something that we decide to go in that direction, maybe that person is a sort of limited um, sort of experience with us in terms of structure, perhaps. But I think then we 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 actually have, I think, all of the um, necessary uh, brain power and creative power to actually do that ourselves. Um, the, I, it comes down to how do we pay for that? I think if um, that, that to me that's a that may be a bigger question. Um, we did with this other consultant the other time with Artwalk, we did split the consulting fee between those uh, people working at Artwalk and the person that came from the outside. So I mean, we did do it before, um, it just got kind of messy. But, but uh, so anyway, that, I just wanna say that we can do that. I, I think we really do need to figure out how do we use the, the brain power we've got, the, the, those of us that are already here, how do we make use of this um, in the best way? And how do we equity, equitably compensate that? Because I think that's another sort of example that we need to be, a, a structure that we need to be creating. Um, so I'll just stop. Here. I wonder if there's anything to glean from the, the Food Policy Council that's being formed and um, they put out a, a request for applications. They're interviewing applicants to be a part of that. People wrote statements to be a part of that. Um, they're getting paid a uh, stipend to participate in meetings. Um, I don't know all the details, but um, you know that way it's, it's open to a broader audience. Folks are getting compensated for their time. They kind of have a, a set 
goal of what they're trying to accomplish. And then, you know, I don't know the full structure, but I know we could certainly find out more information about that. Um, if, if folks are not thinking that going with an outside consultant would make the most sense, but so could I, um, I'm just gonna share my screen real quick again to get back to this um, PDF here. Okay, um, are you seeing the, the CSEP overview PDF? So I just kind of put out there some, some aspects uh, or, or different elements that um, a consultant would be working on and would need to have some expertise in. So maybe we just quickly go through this in light of, of this, this challenging conversation about, you know, who might be able to do that. So I, I believe that the team would need to have experience with one, developing an arts master plan of some kind as, as well as other community plans. Um, some, you know, robust and creative community engagement skills, especially with artists. That's a very specialized thing. Um, and very specialized part of this is experience with establishing nonprofit organizations, especially arts alliance groups um, and, and other communities, encouraging collaboration between municipalities and those nonprofits, um, having the ability to do high quality graphic design for the document, you know, website and other project materials, and then understanding best practices in other communities. Um, it would be great if we had somebody local that, or a collection of folks locally that had those skills. Um, I don't know if we do. Um, and, if, and, if, and if we don't, and it's a deal breaker, then maybe we need to rethink what this plan is. And, that, and that's fine too. That's why we wanna have this early conversation. So any thoughts about, could, could those bullets there be generally covered uh, with a local presence. No, I, I don't believe that we can cover all of those things locally. That's I agree with you there. That's why I say I, I don't think we cannot not have a consultant. I think it's more of how what what where what do we use a consultant for? So I think those are the things we have to figure out. I, I think we have to have a consultant. I, I really don't see how. Yeah, there, there, there are structural things about doing this that we just don't know. And I'm assuming most people here don't know. Um, and so, yeah, I think getting that expertise, if you will, is gonna be, you know, we're gonna need, we're, we should have it. Yeah, but, but, but we need to drive what happens. So that, that's maybe my piece there. Um, and so that's how we word what we, how we use this consultant. I think we can use a consultant. It's just how are we going to use a consultant? I think that's, and that's maybe the next step that we need to do. Yeah, I yeah. think the question yeah. of who's leading is so key there, Thomas. And um, and maybe that's what we're what you're hearing, Kevin, from a lot of folks that, you know, people, this group wants to make sure that that this group who really have investment, boots on the ground, experience, et cetera, are really still in the in the position of leading. Have we thought about the consultant as more of a um, information gatherer, uh, a consultant as someone who can bring back 50 different examples and we can suggest some cities for them to look into, but they can bring back a detailed info from some of those Rust Belt cities and, um, and other areas that Annette and myself have looked at, or, you know, possibly some of those, you know, some other locations. And then this group can kind of say, okay, we like that model for this reason, as opposed to the consultant saying, here's a great model because it worked in Minneapolis or what have you. I also wanted to just throw my little, my little um, two cents in. I just feel like looking at Brooklyn is not useful for us personally. <laughs> I've seen so many, um, you know, external research projects and consultant efforts and planning efforts that are really looking apples and oranges. And I don't think Rochester is going to, I don't think we're going to learn a lot from looking at, at the dynamics in Brooklyn myself personally. And yeah, so much state that. funding gets dumped into Brooklyn. It's it's not even close to comparable to to any anything that we could scale to something that would be reasonable for our city. Yeah, yeah. So I, that's a good good point, Blue, about you know sort of the division of roles and 
And I think that's what Johanna was getting at earlier. And that's an experience that she and I and some other colleagues are having right now with our zoning code rewrite, that um, the consultant we have is really back of house. Um, they have very little um, interface with the community because they're hearing it from us. Because uh, as staff and, and other folks that we're working with and different stakeholders in the community, we, we have the, our, a better finger on the pulse. And so that we can relay that information to our zoning consultant to, um, to kind of flesh that out and to dig into what other cities are doing and um, offer their advisement. And, and they've offered advice and we've said, no thanks, we, 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 what we really need to do is this, but it was good to have the conversation with them about that. And then there's been other points where we're like, we have no idea what to do with this particular policy. And they made a great suggestion. We're like, yes, why don't we do it that way? So there, it's, a, it's a very sort of loose, um, flexible uh, relationship with the local and the consultant where um, we, can, we can really drive things and they're mostly back of house, so to speak. So that is a possibility, I think, with, with this group. Um, I guess where I'm not clear hearing different things from different folks is if you want more of that work to be done locally, but I'm also hearing you don't, you don't, y'all don't have time for it, and you're not getting paid for it. So why should we do the work the consultant should do? So can we reconcile those, uh, those? Well, I think do? Amanda made the point clear I have is a, that we, I have we a, are I, doing the work. We are, in essence, doing the work, and not one of us doesn't qualify in one of those areas of expertise. We may not have them all but each of us brings a level of expertise to any you know, master plan. I will share that the Latino Roundtable gathered for over a year and a half to write our Latino agenda report. We hired a consultant at the very end to actually formulate it and unify um, you know, the, uh, not the content, but the language of it and the structure and you know, put a pretty package together. So we were willing to pay for that end. But, but I think with the, the brilliant creative minds who are really in the trenches in their own areas, we have a lot of that skill. And I'm gonna advocate like I did for Art in the Loop that you know, we also be uh, paid the value of that consulting work and drive the content of the consultants um, formulation and the packaging of whatever our master plan is, you know, build it from the, the ground, the streets up versus mm -hmm. them coming with some formula and telling us that's the way to do it. So that's what I'm hearing. I, I want to be cognitive of everyone's time. We're five minutes um, and just taking a barometer and, and, a, and a time check. And then yeah. also, I know Thomas didn't really do a prayer or a moment of silence. So I do want to acknowledge because there was a lot of great conversation happening in our chat, um, Kevin. So I hope we can capture um, some of that dialogue and recommendations and ideas that were uh, uh, commented on. Yes, thanks. Uh, Olivia, you wanted to say question. something? I have a question. Um, yeah. Um, so this 1% for the arts, can one of these budgets be used for, to fund these various committees? Because that sounds like that's the starting ground. Um, can that be used to, uh, to, can that be allotted to these various arts committees that we're holding right now? Um, which will help allay people's worries and, and also can, and time to be able to do the work properly? Or is it only for, a physical object that's be placed within the the zone of the city zones. What what is the one percent for? Can it be used for these committees? That that's a great question. Um, I've kind of heard different opinions uh, from my colleagues about that, and I'm sort of actively trying to get a little bit more of a clear ruling uh, from folks in our law department and in our budget office about the money that went into this pot, this arts equity fund. Um, what's eligible uh, to be spent on. It's possible that it can go towards the development of a master plan, which I guess in theory could include um, paying folks to help local folks to, to, to develop it. So I think it's a possibility, Olivia, um, but I need to get a more clear ruling and I don't know if Bree or others on the phone might have some thoughts on that. Yeah, because it's, it would be the other it seems like a necessity 
be because if we're going to have if we're going to have these people, all of us who are in our um, appropriate organizations and with our, all of our knowledge, and we're not being paid to do the work, how are we going to properly do the work? It's as if the city wants it to fail, right? That's what the message that would come from not supporting the financial uh, needs of of all of these experts that we're, we're meeting with today. So I would say that that could probably be one of the first things is that funding has to go to a real group, can be real consultants, the real local ones. Because yes, if uh, uh, like I, I'd wanna know with whoever's coming into office now, uh, proposing that to that person right away. Yeah, I mean, we, we right. may that's, not have the luxury of may not have the luxury of doing that in the near future because it's you won't take office until January. I mean, we could have some informal conversations about it and see what he thinks, but uh, that that could take some time. Um, but you know, and I think I'm open to it. It's just a question of what exactly are we paying local folks to do? Is it the community engagement part? I can I can certainly see that. Um, is it the the writing of the plan? I don't know. Do we have the expertise? to do that, to develop the do document, to do the research. Maybe, maybe we have that expertise, I, I, I don't know. But if it's just be participating on a committee, yes, well, that's, that's a different, that's well, a different if, proposition. If there's... Sorry, go ahead. Oh, I couldn't hear the last thing that you said. Did you say it's a different proposition? I said, if, if we're talking about just paying folks like here because they're participating in, in what is essentially a steering committee for a project, um, I'm not saying we can't do that. I'm saying that's a different proposition than paying them to do the work of developing the plan. What can I guess it is. Um, but you figure out? Oh, where sorry. is the starting point? Because, okay, go ahead. No, 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 go ahead. I'm sorry. Well, Olivia, what, what might have a delay? What does this group think too. about that? Yeah. Yeah, sorry, Olivia. I think there's a delay and you're breaking up a little okay. bit. I'm sorry. Um, yeah, I mean, what, what is everybody else? What? Okay, all right. So I understand that um, these are two different issues. Uh, what does the group think about this? I would be interested in assessing what we are capable of doing essentially in-house um, versus what we would need to outsource. And then also assessing what we would want to outsource are there parts of this that it could be beneficial to have an outside perspective on versus having people who've been really close to it for a really long time working on it? Um, so I think just a basic like skill assessment mm -hmm. of, of the group, like who are we actually, do we have the time, not just the knowledge, but do we have the time to, to do can we it? Take the five, can we take the five sections that were kind of the top that were here in the Google Doc and have everyone kind of over the next several days write what they, you know, kind of their brief assessment of their capacity and their interest and, and what they feel is more consultant driven versus just so we can get a sense of that and we can kind of look at it as one document. Like I have this skill set here. I'm not as comfortable with this piece just so we can kind of get a sense. Do we have the ability to build this or not? I, I don't want to, you know, I, if we were able to develop this this initial kind of work scope and, and kind of a separation of, of, of responsibilities, I think we could actually then potentially go to, and maybe this is a little bit bold, but um, a community foundation or a foundation like Farish and say, you know, supporting the, a stipend to allow for some of this work to be in house to help develop the capacities of people locally. Um, then it bypasses this issue of whether or not percent for art funds can be used for this, or it's used to be to supplement a portion of it. I like that idea, Bree. Um, I think, but let me just clarify because I shared two different lists. One was the 
the poll that had like the 10 ideas of the plan, what the plan could cover. And then the other list that I shared was just, uh, let's see, six bullets about the, the types of skill sets that a consultant team should have. I guess both the, both of those lists are sort of relevant to your well, the, suggestion. The last, there, bullets right? are more, the last bullets are more generic. I, I'm talking about more of the scope of work and flushing okay. that out and talking about like, this is what I want to see and this is whether or not I think I can help with that part. Or this is what where I think the consultant would suck if they're not local, or this is where I think we wouldn't know what we were doing. I think we will get that sense from the I would rather flesh that out from the book from the description of the scope of work that we've now prioritized than I would from the more kind of generic skill sets what the consultant capacity would be. Okay. What do others think of that idea? Is is there a possibility that the additional funding coming from the America's rescue plan would be able to fund this kind of the, the stipends that are being talked about or from what I've heard about it just in sort of casual conversations in the hallways here I, I don't think it would be eligible or or likely but um, but we might as Bree suggests need to look for outside funding for that because it does get a little bit complicated when it when it's arts equity funds going towards that I'm not saying it's out of the question I, I honestly don't know but I, I do know it's, it's a little bit complicated. Yeah, and I, I would argue that right now, I I would, that would be later for us to get the funding than I think we would want. Right now, the focus, my understanding is housing, infrastructure, essential work hours, it's not, um, and small business development. And I, I just don't know if we'd be able to, the, the small business would be the last component that I think would be a possibility, but I think we'd be waiting a lot longer to hear answers. I think there's gonna be a lot of slowdown for some of the decision making on some of the expenses right now for the next couple of months. And I would just hate to yeah. slow that down entirely. Right. right. Can I ask yeah. Kevin, what was the idea um, uh, uh, when you put this document together about how the consultant would be funded? It, um, that, that's now news to me that it's it, we weren't already planning on using the um, uh, funds that already exist, perhaps from the percent for the arts. Yeah, um, so it's not uh, decided yet. Um, there, I, I've had a couple of folks uh, from our budget office tell me that it's it's possible that we could use money from the Arts Equity Fund that's, that's been set aside. I think it was, excuse me, over 200,000 in, in this uh, approved budget. So I think it's possible that we can use that money to pay for this plan. And if, if in fact that's true, um, I suppose in theory, we could use that money to pay stipends or local folks. Uh, that might be a little bit more of a stretch, but um, I think those options are still on the table and I, I just need to get some more definitive answers from folks here about that. Um, yeah. and, and I should say that if we if it doesn't, if it's not eligible, we can't use that money, we're gonna have to get creative and find some money elsewhere. I'm not exactly sure where. If you need me to convince any Kevin, anyone Kevin, just let me know. Additionally, the same <laughs> <laughs> Same question for is, is it possible that you know there's any uh, anything in um, contingency or discretionary funds since this has to go to legislation anyway? Any of the stuff that we're doing is that something that could be put? For, and, and again, no, saying that knowing that six month wait, seven month, eight month wait <laughs> before we actually have a you know, folks actually take, I don't even know what's gonna happen. Are things going to city council? Will things get approved? Will, you know, things get slow? I, this is gonna be a weird time for us all, but sure. I, I'm also wondering about whether uh, it's possible for um, us, us to propose something that gets put before, you know, council or whoever's gonna be making decisions about things. Yeah. I mean, it's. In, I think it's entirely possible if we have an agreed upon path among this group and, and it is in fact eligible spending, it's entirely possible that we could advance something in the next three or four months with the current city council and the current uh, mayoral administration. So that is uh, that is possible. Go ahead, Blue. And we also yeah, have which, strong which allies on city council currently as well and incumbents that are returning. So that that could happen. I mean, we, we, we're doing it at the county level. Um, mm -hmm. We've put it forth legislation for opening up art um, events within the county parks. So there are, there are pathways to do that. I just wanted to reiterate Rena's idea to do it quicker than later and, okay. and more 
Thanks. Go ahead, Blue. I was just asking, I was just going to ask if there is, if you've already are identified a rough number for the cost of this RFP, that RFP, RFQ that would go out. Yeah, so in the, in the version where a consultant does like most of the work and we're just kind of a local steering committee, it's probably in the neighborhood of like 100 to 125,000. Um, in the version where we're doing sort of most of the work and the consultant is maybe just uh, developing the document and giving some advice about what they've seen in other cities. You know, maybe that's down like around 30,000 or something like that. And potentially some of that money then could be more focused locally. So it's a really wide range depending on um, how elaborate the scope of work is. So upwards of half of the um, arts equity fund would be allocated toward this, just very rough. In the, in the like the 100, 125,000 scenario, yeah, it would be in the neighborhood of a half. And that's, and that's why Justin in the past was saying this arts investment guidance subcommittee probably dealing with about the first $100,000 um, in terms of where could we invest in public art and that sort of thing. And then the remaining money, which is I think like 136, uh, some or most of that could go towards uh, the, the plan. Um, but the, that really could shift quite a bit, depending on, on how we want to go with this. So I, I know we're well over here. Um, these are some, some tricky things to navigate. I appreciate your, your creative creativity here, your willingness to explore some different ideas. I have to do the same. I have to get outside of the, the boxes that I've worked in in the past to, to find the right solution here. Uh, but I appreciate everyone's insight and and the values that you're expressing here is really, really key. And so I, I hope that we can find the right path forward that works for everybody and exists within the, you know, the, the legal confines of the, of the money and the strings that are attached there. So um, we'll do our best to, to find that path forward. Um, Annette or Sean, thoughts about um, sort of next steps? Um, I think we really have an, a notion of, um, wanting to maybe meet again. I'm not sure if that's a necessary piece before the larger group discussion. Um, I think um, Bree's idea about sending out um, just a little survey to each of us of areas of expertise and what we, what we think we can do and what we're willing or able to do. I think that's a really great idea. And also, you know, assessing our value in doing that work. So I wanna be clear that that's an important element as well. Um, so uh, really um, it's, it's up to us. I can put out another survey for us to meet uh, mid July. And I think we're looking at the end of July to meet again in the large group. And not for nothing, we can also go down to, you know, Rocco and check out art and meet there. So I'm up for that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. Or the Avenue and listening to some poetry or La Avenida. <laughs> I think we need to gather um, sooner than later in art spaces and places and actually visit some of, you know, the, the neighborhoods that, you um, we haven't been in in a, in a while or been to, into together. So thank you everyone, great work. Um, we'll have that email out and then um, we've recorded this so anyone else can hear it. And then also Friday's um, subcommittee will also be recorded. So we're trying to be as transparent as possible. And, um, and I think we'll just continue to do that so that um, we're, we're ensuring our own sense of values to the work. So thank you. Yeah, thanks everyone. And I'll, I'll, um, I'll send out a spreadsheet or something like that to, to Bree's suggestion to that, something to that effect about sort of documenting what skills we might be able to cover uh, locally. So, and I think that will help us flesh this out a little bit more. So great stuff. Thank you, everybody. Hey. Thanks. Have a great Bye, night. Everyone. Thank you all. Have a good night. You too. Yes. You too.